Amadil Kumar will discuss function of function in this video. We have very interesting functions in this particular case. We are given f of x as square root of 4 minus x square and g of x as equals to x square. We need to write the composite function g of f of x and find its domain and range. Well, in another video, we'll also take up uh, f of g of x, right? We'll also do that part, f of g of x. In this video, we'll concentrate on g of f of x. Now, let us see how to find this function from the given function. So, what we have here is g of, so let me write down the inside function in a different ink so that it becomes very clear as to what we're trying to do. So, we have g of f of x. Do you see that? So it is one function inside a function. Whenever you want to evaluate this kind of a function or function, we have to always start from inside out. So we have to do inside out. That is a strategy. Now inside we have f of x, which is this function. So f of x will be replaced by that part, right? So we'll get this function as g of so what is f of x? Let's write it down inside. So inside function is square root of 4 minus x squared. Is it okay? So that is g of this. Now we know g of x is x squared. That means all this is going to replace x squared, right? So now all this will substitute for x. Do you see that? So we are saying g of square root of 4 minus x squared should be what? x is going to replace all this. So we have square root of 4 minus x square whole square. So whole square. That is what we get. So that simplifies to square root is like to the power of half and square. So, so you could say this is equals to square root vanishes. So we get 4 minus x square. Correct? So we get our function of function as 4 minus x square. Right. So let me write down the function of function very clearly here as g of f of x is equals to 4 minus x square. Right. Now remember the inside function when we started with was 4 minus x square. The function which we get now is g of f of x which is 4 minus x square. Now, if I have to write domain and range of this function, how do we write it? If you only see the end product, this product has no restriction on domain. Do you get my point? This product has no restriction on domain. However, the inside function f of x has restriction on domain. Right? Let me explain you how. So, we first calculated f of x. So, basically, we have f of x here, right? So, so we first calculated f of x. So we said, what is f of x for us? This is f of x, right? So for every value here, we had an output, correct? So, so the domain basically gets restricted with the restrictions on f of x. So this is, this is our super domain. You can say that, right? Super domain. We cannot have domain of the function outside this domain, okay? So our domain has to be subset. So this domain has to be subset of domain of f of x. This is a very important point to remember, okay? Now here, what is the restriction? Square root 4 minus x square. Square root 4 minus x square. So what we have here is a function f of x, which is this function, square root 4 minus x square. Clearly here, x should be in between which values? 2 squared is 4, right? So minus 2 and plus 2, correct? You could also get it from, from a graph. You could sketch this, right? You could sketch this uh, on a graph, which is, 4 minus x square will be kind of a parabola like this. Is it okay? Where these values are minus 2 and plus 2, maximum is 4. So that is the domain. So in the domain, we can have values like uh, 
minus 2, we can have values like plus 2 or in between. But we cannot have 3, we cannot have 4, we cannot have minus 3 because that will make this invalid. Is that okay? Now from this, we get outputs. From this domain, we get outputs, correct? So from here, we get f of x. And using these values, we get our final function. That is, when we applied g of x on the f of x, right? So what we got here is g of f of x. Do you see that? So this is g of f of x. So that really gives you the range. Domain is decided from here itself. So that is our super domain. So what we see here is that the function has no restriction on domains. This output function has no restriction on domain. So we'll go with the super domain, right? So, so we say our domain for this particular case is what? So let me write down domain now. So domain is x belongs to real numbers where x is between plus and minus 2. Is it okay? And as far as the range is concerned, it is also decided by these two values. You cannot have any other value. We can have values in between these two, right? So f minus x squared, we can evaluate for these two values as the outside values. Is that okay? So if I write minus 2, let's go with minus 2 first. So if I write minus 2, then what do I get? The output should be 4 minus minus 2 whole square is 0. So for, for minus 2, the point which I get here will be 0. For plus 2, the point which I get here will again be 0. And if I take 0 as my point, in that case, I get 4. And that is probably the maximum value, right? So we get range as y belongs to real numbers, which is between 0 and 4. Do you see that? That is how we get. Correct? You could do intermediate values also. If I write minus 2, then the square root will be 0, right? This will be 0. And if I have this as a 0, then g of 0 will be 0. Do you see that? Square of 0 is 0. So we get 0. So you could do like this also in steps. You get the same result. Right? So I hope you find it interesting and useful. So at times when we are having composition of functions, the domain is to be decided. A domain is a subset of the domain of inside function and the range is decided by the outside function for the restricted domain. You get an idea, right? So for the restricted domain, for the restricted inputs, we have the range. So this is a very interesting example and I hope it helps you to understand all these concepts. I'm Anil Kumar. You can always share and subscribe my videos. Thank you and all the best.